to dwell in your presence in your house. I pray, God, that I will decrease and allow you to increase in my mind, my spirit, and my soul. God, I pray that you will take full control over every word that I will say and that it will make me to your glory and to your honor. I pray, God, that you would hand on the hearts of every person in this place, God. Lord, I pray that the word will go forth to encourage their hearts. I pray that the word will go forth that it will give them the ability to fight the devil for everything that he is not worth. Because he has no glory and he has no honor in our lives. So God, I pray, Lord, that you would alert each and every one of the, uh, each and every one of us, include myself, and let the words of my mouth and to the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight. Oh Lord, you are my strength and you are my redeemer. In Jesus' name, amen. Again, as I stated before, we've been talking in a series of called Build the Wall. And we've been dealing with Jer uh, Nehemiah on all kinds of levels. Pastor has talked about from having a burden to Pastor Stacy was talking about guarding the wall. It's been numerous amount of things talking about building a wall. So I want to come out of Nehemiah 1. Verses 2 through 11, and it says that Hanai, one of my brothers, came with certain, with certain men from Judea. And I asked them concerning the Jews who had escaped, who had survived the exile, and concerning Jerusalem. And they said to me, the remnant there in the providence who had survived the exile is in great trouble and shame. I said, great trouble and shame. The wall of Jerusalem is broken down and its gates are destroyed by fire. As soon as I heard these words, I sat down and I wept and mourned for days. And I continued fasting and praying before the God of heaven. And I said, oh Lord, God of heaven, the great and awesome God who keeps covenant and steadfast love with those who love him and keep his commandments. Let your ear be attentive and your eyes open to, the, to hear the prayer of your servant that I now pray before you day and night for the people of Israel, of your servants, confessing the sins of people of Israel which we have sinned against you. Even I, my father's house, have sinned. We have acted very corruptly against you and have kept the commandments, the statutes, and the rules that you commanded your servant Moses. Remember the word that you commanded your servant, Moses, saying, If you are unfaithful, I will scatter you among the people. But if you return to me and keep my commands and do them, though your outcasts are in the utmost parts of the heaven, from there I will gather them and bring them back to the place that I have chosen. To make my name dwell there, that are your servants and your people who have redeemed your great power and by your strong hand. O oh Lord, let your ear be attentive to the prayer of your servant and to the prayer of your servants who delight to fear your name and give success to your servant today and grant him mercy in the sight of this man. Now, I was a cupbearer for the king. Here we have in the book of Nehemiah, which Pastor has actually also covered, in chapter 1, beginning in 2 and 11, we have Nehemiah here setting it up and he's asking his brother of the condition of what's going on after the exile. During the exile, a lot took place and the people were scattered and a whole lot was going on. But Jeremiah, I mean Nehemiah, I'm sorry, was very concerned for his people. And I asked God, where do you want me to come? in the series of Build the Wall. And God began to speak in this particular chapter and verses. But the flip part was, is that my husband was talking to our kids a few weeks ago, and he was talking to them about the difference from grinding and hustling. Yes, pastor said grinding and hustling. It wasn't me this time. Uh, 
But he was talking about grinding and hustling and he was really schooling them on the difference of hustling and grinding. And we, also, we are often always trying to challenge their minds beyond where they think and what they feel like they know where they're going. And after that, we usually piggyback off of each other and say, so Mel, what do you think? And I said to them, so the only thing that I hear is, get off the porch. And pretty young y'all look at me the same way they did. And they said, get off the porch. I said, the porch is a mentality. I remember growing up, and I remember when it get hot in Lexington, uh, my aunt lived straight out East End, and if you kept going out Fifth Street into the project, she lived straight ahead. And it was some good, day, good days on Fifth Street in my aunt's house. We seen a whole lot of stuff go down. We seen the police come through, maybe lock up somebody. We seen somebody get their hair braid. We seen a little bit of everything, and the porch used to go down. You learn new music, you learned a whole lot of stuff. And when I told them that, I said, God, what does that mean? Because I enjoyed the porch. I enjoyed the summer times being out East End, growing up here in Lexington. He said, but it's a mentality. The porch is a mentality. And I told him, I said, I, what I mean about getting off the porch is getting off your mentality that you think that you've already accomplished. Sitting on the porch, and these are the images that I seen, I started to research what the porch meant and what it meant to our culture. And I know many of you all can attest whether you live in Chicago, Detroit, anywhere, everybody sat on the porch at somebody's family's house. And I started researching this thing. I said, God, what is it about the porch? And I researched all the way back from slavery. From the 1900s, people have been chilling on the porch. And I said, what is it about the porch, though? And the history of the porch setting was, in the 1900s, the slaves didn't have no air, so they didn't have no choice but to sit on the porch. But a lot of us are still chilling on the porch. We like our mentality, you can't tell us nothing, you can't tell us, I mean, we can't break our values because we're still chilling on the porch. But God is wanting to take the mentalities that we've had for so many years and do something totally different with them. But we cannot get where God wants us to be because we're still chilling on the porch. You cannot build a wall while you're still hanging out with Boo Boo and Boo Boo and Kiki and Wawa while you're still chilling on the porch. You're still right here on the porch, but God is trying to take you somewhere else. And if you're going to build a wall, which the wall means strength, you're building strength within yourself. In order to build strength, you can't be chilling on nobody's porch. You cannot chill on the porch while building a wall. And that's what Nehemiah was asking. He was asking the conditions of his people. He's like, what's going on with my people? He even went to intercede for his people. God, what is it about them? And it's a mentality that's been going on since the 1900s. We all have had this mentality, like I'm showing in these images, if somebody keeps those images going for me on there. This thing started out in slavery. I'm sure the slaves didn't want us to still be sitting on no porch, coming and posting up in my baby's new jeans and these new outfits that we put on. He want, they wanted us to get off the porch and fight just like they had to. Look at these images. These images are from the 1900s into today, 2016. We're still having that mentality. And I really believe that God was dealing with me about us and our mentality. So many times we want to say we're moving forward. So many times we're saying that we're moving forward. So many times we're saying, God, we're developing. But we're for real, just chilling on the porch. The thing about my auntie's porch is East End of rebuild two or three different times. There is no more porch over there. If you keep driving down Fifth Street, you might run into a wall or something now. They don't build, they don't build too much stuff now, but we're still chilling on the porch within our mind, within our religion, within the things that we feel like we know what we're doing. We're not doing it. You cannot build a wall with old rubber. created in us. 
Ephesians, I think it's Ephesians. Is it Ephesians, you all? It's Colossians. I mean, Colossians 3 and 10. It says, heaven to put on a new self, which is being renewed in knowledge in the image of our creator. Every day, we fight and we war with who we are, what we were brought up to do, the, the values and everything that has been put on us. And so many times within our minds, we're saying we're growing, we're elevating, and we're, we're getting where we need to be. And I'm going to be the first to attest to say, I have fought all week with what has been put on me. I didn't ask for a lot of stuff to be put on me, but I'm fighting through my mama, I'm fighting through my daddy, I'm fighting through everything that has been put on me. And in order for us to build a wall, we got to go deep down into what has caused us to be where we are. And that is a new mind, a new perspective in Christ Jesus. And sitting on the porch with our mentality ain't gonna work. Sitting on the porch talking about, um, yeah, I'm good. God is moving in my life. But what have you done with God in your life? And why have you not moved with God with your life? Because we're chilling. We fly too on the porch. We cute on the porch. Our hair is done on the porch. We got a few boobs right here on the porch. <laughs>
on trying to put this debris back on, this old debris. You cannot. The, the Jews was, they, the exile was 152 years, but it only took them 52 days to build the wall. Unless you know, somewhere, it was a, it was a flaw. And I keep asking God, every time I come up here, God always has challenged me to talk about the mind and challenge the mind. But the mind had to start first within me. Every day I wore, and I know my husband, I'm so grateful to him, that he intercedes and prays for me because I war with a mentality. I war with where I came from. I war with what I think I cannot do. I war with what God says that I am. I war with that. And so many of us are worn with that in fear and trembling. I was fear and trembling coming up and looking at y'all and y'all face something about a burn. And some of y'all probably still got burns on the porch. I said, Lord, I don't want to fight. I don't fight no more like that. You know? But I was like, God, how is that? But he, but he was like, I'm, I'm trying to get you somewhere. I had asked a few of my sisters in here. I was like, Lord, pray for me. Because that's hard. And I know it was hard for Nehemiah. He was trying to transform his people's mind. He was trying to build them up. He was trying to give them encouragement. He was trying to let them know that we do not have to stay here. It's a calling for each and every one of us in this place today. It is a calling on each and one of our lives. And the enemy is going to try to destroy that as much as he can. I am a witness of it. Every day I feel inadequate, but my God said, I am strong. When I feel weak, He has built me up. He has transformed my mind. He has moved me forward. And I'm here to tell each and every one of you, He will move you forward if you will release what He wants to do within your mind. The mind is connected to the heart. And so whatever you think, that's what it's going to be. If you know that you're a conqueror, you better stand up and tell the devil you are a conqueror. If you know that you can build that wall that has torn down, I mean the wall, you know you come from this porch mentality. All of us have. All of us have chilled on the columns of our lives. Every, all of us have uh, chilled on the gifts of our lives. All of us have chilled. church. 
We'll say, oh, I'm leaving this church to pick up this, to go over here because I feel that you bring all your beliefs, all your mentality, everything that you know, and you bring it over here and you analyze it according to where you just left. And that is the porch mentality that you got to do. mentality with the perm the box perm mentality and he don't want you to have that box perm mentality I'm telling you all please hear me hear me hear me hear me hear me you have to it breaks my heart when I see people and I interact with people and on the inside they glamming it they glamming it oh praise the Lord sister God bless you. And on the inside, man, you are all tore up. That's why I like going to somebody that really don't even know God like that. What's up? How are you? I don't know. You know, they really give you the for real answer. Church folks dress it up and be hurting all on the inside. It's time for us to fa quit falsifying God in our relationship with God and let's keep it 100 so we can correctly grow and build the wall the way we're supposed to build it. We cannot keep saying, oh, I'm good. Oh, everything is good. You better let somebody see your tears for you can grab my hand and pray for me because I am a mess right now and I don't know which way I'm going and I need a sister, a brother, the baby sister, the baby cousin, somebody to pray for me. That's what we're supposed to be doing. That's the wall we're supposed to be building. That's the burden that the pastor was talking about. You are smart than what you look. You look smart. You are smart. Quit letting people make you feel like you're defeated because you're not. You're not. We have to break this mentality, especially over our culture. We pick up mentalities. We hold on to it because somebody passed it down to us and we didn't even ask for it. Don't hand me nothing else. I ain't taking nobody else's stuff. I ain't taking nobody else's attitude. I ain't taking nobody else's uh, drugs. I'm not taking nothing else. Don't put no more of your generational stuff on me. Don't put nothing else on me. Release me to let me move fully into what God has called me to be. I have fought this calling so long because of fear, and fear has been in my family forever. But I said, devil, you a lie. You, li you a lie because I'm moving forward. So now my babies don't have to be scared no more. They can be able to move forward because you got to break that cycle off your life. You in that family for a reason. You are part of that family for a reason. You could be that true deliverer for your family if you will ever get off the porch. Get off the porch. Get off the porch. You got to. It's so much at a state. So much to fight for. So many mentalities. It's beyond you coming to the porch again in your J's. Your kids are fly. And they get their 4th of July outfit. No shade. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. You got to break the mentalities. Every day of my life, I'm trying to condition my mind for what I have been brought up to. Yeah. Yeah. And I understand some work, and I understand some don't. And I want to get rid of every last one of them that don't, because it has held me up. Unforgiveness, bitter, anger.
anger. You cannot build no wall like it. Because every time you build, it's going to fall. 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 So you better acknowledge what is right and what is good. Hold on to what is good and hold on to what is right. That's what the Bible says. It tells you to hold on to what is good and let go what is not. I'm not saying your families are not good. I'm not saying that where you came from wasn't good. I'm not saying your upbringing wasn't good because mine was. I had a good upbringing. But for me to fulfill what God has called for me to do, I got to let some of it go. Some that don't make sense. Some stuff we do just don't make sense. Some stuff that we say, some stuff that we operate in just don't make sense. Again, the porch. They only did it because they didn't have no air. Why are we still sitting on the porch braiding people's hair and stuff? It don't make sense. You have to empower yourself. You have to motivate yourself. And what we have is the word of God. Yeah. People out there don't have the word of God. We have the word of God. And if we can get all of this stuff out of our mind, then we can clearly see the word of God for what it is and what it is designed to do. And it's it's designed to help us. Great people are in this Bible. Great people have done great things through this Bible and they have came through many generational curses, many generational issues, many generational things. And even Nehemiah, he acknowledged, I sinned with my people. You can't come out and look down on the people that you came out on. You got to come and sit right beside them on this, on this, on this, uh, on this porch and say, look, you are way better than these drugs you keep selling. You are way better than this crack you keep smoking. You are way better than this heroin that you keep taking. You are better than this. So I need you to get up with me and let's go forward in the ways of the Lord. You can do it. That's why you got to be so grounded. That's why you got to build your walls strong so you can go back and get get whoever, whatever your nickname for your cousin is. You can pick them up, but you cannot build no wall if yours is broken down. If your wall is all broken and shattered and debris all over the place, how you gonna help them pick up a wall and build them strong with strong strength? You got to. It's a must. It's a must. You slapping Jesus in the face when you don't do it. You keep slapping him. You just backhanding God all the time because you don't really want to surrender over everything. Oh, God, let me hold on to this just a little bit longer. This feels good. He's fine. Oh, she's my boo. But you got to whatever means and whatever is throwing you off. Trust God in just that. I'm not going to hold you too much longer, but I'm going to end with this. And this movement has always touched me. And I don't know if I shared this with you all, but in the in the seven in the sixties and the seventies, the civil rights movement. It was something about that movement. Yeah, I do look too for some that are older and like, what you know about the civil rights movement? The civil rights movement had power to me. I feel like the hand of God was so strong on that. He would pick certain ones, not just Dr. King, the ones that we learned in history, but it was some soldiers in that movement that really stood for some things. And, and it, was, it was something about that movement that even when somebody was throwing, telling them, baby, don't fight, don't fight, be subject to what's been put on us. Be, be in order with what's been put on us. Don't worry about it, God will provide. God will provide, but when he puts something in your heart, you better go with it. Any means necessary was Malcolm X's quote. But Dr. King was for peace, so you can do it the peaceful way and still God get the glory. And it was something about that movement and anytime I'm trying to motivate myself, I watch 
I wear, I wear my husband out. I watch Selma and I watch different ones because I'm trying to condition my mind the same way they did because when God is doing something new and God is, is moving us somewhere new, undescribable, unimaginable, you have to find something that conditions your mind. And the civil rights movement is that for me because they stood up, they knew it was wrong, they knew the things that they were being treated, they knew the way they were being talked about, they knew the things that were said about them, but they were determined to make sure every last one of us are free. And look at us, we free. We free. We free to do. And how dare us to not stand on their back, on their shoulders, and show forth the strength that they had within them. God put something in their heart to make sure they kept running and being, I mean, could any of us took the dogs biting us? No, you've been ready to fight. The holes and all of that stuff. That civil rights movement was so, 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 so powerful. And I'm here to encourage you today is that you have have to get out of that porch mentality. You're better, you're stronger. We're stronger together. We're stronger for our families when we're walking in healthiness and the fulfillment of what God really, really has for our lives. I would end in this last quote. John Lewis said in a quote, he said, get out there and push and stand up and speak out and get in the way the same way my generation got in the way and get in trouble good trouble necessary trouble we can build a wall but we got to go into that mentality that we had it really transformed my mind to effectively build ourselves strong and in the strength of all God has called us to be God bless you